Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for making time to attend this symposium. I'm Dr. Yongdu. I'm a consultant physician in New Medicine and Pet CT at the Royal Marsden Hospital in London. So today I'm going to talk about Garlin PSMA 11, the Pet CT imaging tracer, which has actually changed the management of prostate cancer. Nowadays, we hear a lot about precision medicine. So in my eyes, precision medicine requires precision imaging. Over the past 20 years, since the advent of PET-CT, and uh, that is a happy marriage in my eyes, and uh, PET-CT imaging has improved cancer care in many cancers. And for example, lymphoma, lung cancer, breast cancer, GI, head and neck, testicular, bladder, gynecology, you name them. So the very interesting one is gallium dotated in, in, in neuroendocrine tumor. It not only improved the imaging, but also led to subsequent uh, serenostic treatment. Today we focus on prostate cancer because we all know FDG is not very sensitive in imaging prostate cancer because the prostate cancer usually do not have significantly elevated metabolic activity. So about 10 years ago, we started to use F-choline and then FACBC, and more recently, gallium PSMA. As an interesting reflection of the importance of nuclear medicine in modern cancer care, the impact factors of nuclear medicine journals have increased and maintained fairly high, although not as high as uh, major oncology journals. But considering the small nuclear medicine community, this is a fantastic reflection of the importance of nuclear medicine in modern cancer care. So prostate cancer, approximately, approximately one in nine of us would develop prostate cancer, unfortunately, in our lifetime. And it is the second leading cause of cancer deaths in men. So at the different stages of prostate cancer, diagnosis, relapse, disease progression, uh, various treatments, every stage imaging plays important roles. There is an unmet need. As I said, FDG hasn't been extremely useful in imaging prostate cancer. And staging wise was a big difficulty about 10 years ago, we started to use F-choline, like in this case, it showed T1, N1, M1B disease with a bony metastasis. However, lots of us who used F-choline knew that sometimes it's quite difficult, especially for small lymph nodes. It's not extremely easy to differentiate a low-grade optic if it's become because of reactive change or early metastasis because at the end of the day, F-choline is not a cancer or prostate cancer specific imaging tracer. Same problem for the FACBC. So more recently, uh, we identified PSMA, prostate specific membrane antigen, and overexpressed on the cell surface of most prostate cancer, especially in advanced high-grade and re refractory cancers. And we conjugate that with PSMA 11 with uh, a ligand and labeled with gallium 68 that enabled us to scan PS uh, prostate cancer cells directly. And I want to highlight several important prospective clinical trials. This is one of the trials re published recently um, by Professor Hoffman in Lancet. This, this study focused on high-risk prostate cancer used PSMA, gallium PSMA. And they found that undoubtedly a higher, much higher, significantly higher uh, diagnostic accuracy and also very interestingly, in this group of cancer, high-risk prostate cancer, approximately 30% of them actually had a metastatic disease. And uh, gallium PSMA compared to conventional imaging changed the management in 28% of those patients compared to 15%. In another word, if we didn't use PSMA scan, we are treat treating approximately 
half of those patients incorrectly. That's very, very scary. And also it has much less equivocal cases. And very interestingly, it delivers much less radiation dose to the patients. Another very challenging scenario is when patient had a biochemical recurrence. Overall, approximately half of patients with prostate cancer, despite early radical treatment, would have biochemical recurrence. I recall a story about 10 years ago when one of my colleagues asked me, oh, I always see biochemical recurrence when the PSA started gradually creep up, but I don't have a good imaging modality. But that time, that was just before uh, F-calling and certainly before PSMA. And we knew FDG wasn't helpful, so I wasn't able to help him. But now we have PSMA, and this is another important publication published in Lancet Oncology last year. That was a very important prospective comparative study compared FACBC with PSMA. And the study demonstrated a much higher, significantly higher sensitivity and accuracy with PSMA per CT in, the, uh, in this setting. That's very, very important. Show you a couple of cases like in this case, and a patient has rising PSA after a radical prostatectomy and salvage radiotherapy to the prostate bed, and F calling was negative. Then at that time, we had both F calling and PSMA. The PSMA showed very small uh, recurrent lymph nodes, like this one in the presacral region, approximately three, four millimeter, and with F calling, it was negative. Not only detecting cancer, PSMA has also been found extremely useful in monitoring response, like in this case, a bony metastasis and four, five months after hormonal therapy, completely resolved, and that's in line with the undetectable PSMA level, uh, PSA level in the bloodstream. And more recently, a central reviewed a clinical trial, and we give oligometastatic disease uh, targeted ablation and using PSMA to monitor response. That showed a wonderful correlation, but the trial result hasn't been published, so I'm not showing the images. As I mentioned, similar to dotatate, is a con the replacement of gallium PSMA with lutetium PSMA. Gallium and lutetium, they are chemically identical, but physically different. Gallium delivers targeted beta radiation directly to the cancer cells. So we can scan the patients with gallium PSMA first, then identify where the metastasis is, like in this case, lymph nodes and bony metastasis. Then subsequently, we could replace that with lutetium, then give molecular radiotherapy or molecular serenostics. So I started the, the serenostics uh, with lutetium PSMA in the UK and have treated just over 100 patients. But I would like to acknowledge that colleagues in Germany started much earlier and because certainly they are very clever colleagues and also logistic uh, uh, hurdles in other countries like France in the United States, especially in the USA, despite they did lots of preclinical work and clinical work in the past, the treatment is still not available in the US yet. And this is one of the examples. And the patient, uh, as we all know, uh, has had undergone all the treatments, radical prostatectomy, nodal sampling, adjuvant radiotherapy, then disease relapsed with hormones, with chemotherapy, then eventually disease progressed on abiraterone. Uh, this is a, a baseline PSMA PET CT scan. The multiple presacral nodes uh, or obturator nodes in this region, after two cycles, dramatically reducing in size. It's a game changer. So, lots of the patients, approximately 50%, had a very good response to PSMA treatment. This is another important, also published by Professor Hoffman. Uh, two years ago in Lancet Oncology, in this phase two study, he demonstrated approximately 
60% response in these 30 patients, and more importantly, with minimal toxicity. Garland PSM11 has also used in patient selection for phase three trials, uh, multiple phase three trials in the setting up. This is the well-known region trial, which completed uh, recruitment a while ago. We are still waiting for the final outcome to so use the PSMA, uh, Garland PSMA to select patients and subsequently treat them with lutetium PSMA. And more recently, and also in Germany, colleagues started to use uh, explore actinium PSMA. I found that uh, in patients who have developed resistance to lutetium PSMA could still respond very well to actinium PSMA. And these are the scans uh, baseline after two cycles of lutetium PSMA and then after two cycles of actinium PSMA. This is also the scans were also taken using Garland PSMA 11. Uh, Garland PSMA 11 enables more precise management of prostate cancer because it has higher specificity and sensitivity than any other available imaging modality. As the clinical trials have demonstrated, it provides more accurate staging in high risk patients. As I mentioned, in that group of patients, approximately 30% of them actually had a metastatic disease. It's a sensible question to ask, what about intermediate risk patients? But in clinical practice, especially in the private market in the UK, so most of patients with intermediate patient risk, they would naturally like to have a gallium PSMA per CT scan before radical treatment. And the, the next one is in biochemical recurrence. As I said, when there was a recurrence, the PSA started to creep up. And usually, at the very beginning, the disease are either local recurrence or oligometastatic. Certainly, there are also widespread metastasis. But oligometastatic is a very interesting group of patients. We conducted clinical trials to give targeted treatment using cyber knife or gamma knife. That whether that would lead, lead to uh, overall survival benefit, we don't know, but we do know that has led to dramatic quality of life improvement, especially for patients' mentality. They saw the PSA disappeared. They are very happy. Otherwise, they constantly worry about tumor growing in their body. And also very important, and extremely useful to assess uh, response to treatment. As I mentioned earlier, it also enables subsequent serenosis or targeted molecular radiotherapy using lutetium yttrium or actinium labeled PSMA, and certainly also useful in new trials. As we have discussed, the Garlin PSMA 11 has been the gold standard for imaging prostate cancer, but it's quite costly because so far the Garlin is only generator produced. Although new cyclotrons have a capability potentially to produce PSM gallium, but hasn't been in clinical practice. And therefore, with the generator, the quantity of production is limited. And also because gallium has a quite short half-life of approximately an hour, it limits its transportation and therefore availability. So there are also development of other gallium PSMA tracers using different labeling conjugation methods, which has been in clinical use. And also, understandably, there is a huge desire, huge hunger to produce fluorine labeled PSMA because fluorine has longer half-life, can be produced in larger quantity from cyclotron, but it is a completely different chemistry. And some colleagues in other parts of the world use a technetium PSMA as a replacement. These, these tracers have all been showing promise or clinical usefulness, but there is a lack of direct comparison studies, which is very much needed because we want to use the best possible tracer 
and not to compromise diagnostic accuracy. Thank you very much.